Hello students, and welcome back to Hexed Education. And as you can see, that is a gun in my hand, and I'm happy to see you. <laughs> welcome back to lesson number 18 of Hexed Education, and today we're going to be talking about the, the hunter's handgun, and also the revolver, but that's more sort of a side note. I, I uh, decided to come into class with a handgun, although it's actually not loaded at the moment, because I wanted to express how much I love this weapon. This is my favorite weapon in Hexit. It has a number of different ammunition which you can craft. Uh, ho however, before you can do that, I highly recommend you get yourself a large supply of gunpowder. I'm not sure how. Maybe you have been lucky enough to um, take on take on one of our uh, galleons, like the one that we have nearby here, and you've taken on, taken on the considerable amount of TNT that's on that and uncrafted that to make a few stacks of gunpowder. Because you, you know, believe me, when you start making ammunition for this thing, you realize just how valuable gunpowder actually is. So. You know, in order, so in order, to in order to start this lesson on the handgun, we're actually going to go somewhere we haven't been before. Although you you see me, oop, just fell down. Although you have seen me uh, create it in our in our overworld campus, we are going to the Nether. And uh, I haven't done a lot in there, but I, I've been working a little bit towards making it a little more hospitable. Hello, Mr. Creeper. No, that's not creepy. That's a zombie. I'm a teacher here. I know what I'm talking about. No, actually, I don't. But I try to. So, I made a little pathway over here <coughs> with some nether brick and cobblestone and gravel. And I added actually a little more leather, a little more lava there for effect. And anyway, this is our uh, portal we got when we, when we hit this area with a Krekneret meteor strike. On to the nether. And uh, I should take a moment to point out that every single time this is now every time i have ever made another portal that is above ground it's always spawned in the worst possible place i'm just going to go create mode for a moment just to show you how bad a spawn point this is yeah that is a gigantic lake of lava and if you see yeah that's cobblestone i put that there because before I put the cobblestone there, it was mo it was only soul sand, sorry, and 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 nether rack. Then that was it. That's the only thing that keeps up in between the portal and the lava. So I see a problem with the situation. So in the future, I recommend you do not make portals. Your least your first portal to the nether uh, above ground. It is very dangerous. Speaking of very dangerous, actually, we have like a little visitor. Fortunately, these guys are not that bad. This is an imp. These guys are, are denizens of the nether that are added by Natura, and they're not terribly dangerous. Although, if you kill them, they do drop imp leather, which is which is a decent um, compensation for lack of cows in the nether, which you can make, I think it's four to two um, actual leather. And as you can look around, I've done a little bit of work here, made a little bit of a barrier against the, the uh, gas. Let me switch back to survival mode for, for a little bit. And uh, you see here, I've got a couple of trees. This is in anticipation of our uh, episode on, on trees and plants in Hexit. Some of them have grown, some of them have not. I haven't been here in a while, so I'm assuming that's the reason they haven't um, they haven't spawned that much. But the reason I came here today to start a lesson on the hunter's handgun is this. Now, these are actually somewhat rare. Oh crap! Somewhat rare in, in, in the Nether. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that you that you find one around here. Okay, this is a sulfur cloud. I actually have to spawn this one in, so it will not look exactly like this. It'll probably be a lot bigger. But what this is, is it's added by Natura. It's a cloud that you can just right click on, and you get these sulfur cloud blocks. You take the blocks, I think it's four to two or four to one. Let me just grab a couple. Oh, Mr. Pagan, I'm not going to hurt you, even though you're infernal. Here you go. It's four to one sulfur out of that and it says here two by two converts into gunpowder so if i were to harvest the rest of this cloud and again the ones you find in the chair even though they are rare will be much larger than this i think there's certain mods that add uh, sulfur as an ore which is much more efficient still it's a pretty good way to get your hands on Mm -hmm. 
There we go. There we go, finally. So two by two gives you one gunpowder. So it's not great, but it's one of the better me methods of, of gaining gunpowder in, in Hexit, unfortunately. Other than that, you're gonna have to just, uh, take, take on uh, a galleon and get the TNT stores from that and uncraft that because you're gonna need it in massive amounts as, as we delve into the hunter's handgun. So back to the overworld campus. I'm just going to switch to day. So for, for today's lesson, we're not going to be uh, in, in any of our normal buildings because we'll be playing around with firearms and most notably high explosive firearms. So uh, I, I built this a little little area. I'm going to get some pork. I built a little area to, right to the side of our playground where we can have fun with firearms in a relatively safe environment. Here we are, and you can see I have two targets prepared. And I'll get into what those targets are made out of in just a moment. So, switch back to, I'm in survival, but I need to switch to recipe mode. So I can show you, okay. Here we go. The hunter's handgun is made from iron, piece of slime, and three different components. Uh, hammer assembly, assembly, and assembly. Each of these three items is made with uh, iron and also, in this case, ender pearls, magma cream, magma cream blaze rod, and a button. So you definitely need magma cream to make this thing, as well as slime. And this is also made with magma cream. And also an empty magazine, which is made just simply with glass, stone, and, and iron. Not too difficult to get, and you get five for every one recipe. You will need I like to carry at least 10 magazine rounds, uh, magazines with me, so just based, based on that. I wouldn't say it's usually not worth it carrying more than uh, three stacks of ammunition because you, you always need an extra stack, so that'd be four stacks you be carrying just for your ammunition and anti-magazines. So it's up to you how many you want to carry, but generally you don't need more than maybe 20 of these. So uh, the one thing I will note is very important. Um, this, this is a slime ball. This is not to be confused in this case with no, it's not with here with, with the gelatinous slime. The gelatinous slime is added by um, by Tinker's construct. It is almost functionally equivalent to slime ball, with the, with several significant exceptions. The hunter's handgun is one of those exceptions. You cannot use the, the blue slime in, in exchange in, in, in place of the green slime in this recipe. I know it's unfortunate because, because ironically, you can actually use the, the blue slime to make magma cream. This is perfectly acceptable. However, it's, it's not acceptable uh, to make, make the hunter's handgun. It's unfortunate. To be honest, if you feel like it, if you really cannot find a source of green slime, I personally think it's okay to exchange a couple of your, uh, sacrifice a couple of your blue slimes for green slimes. This is the kind of thing that should be functionally equivalent, but it is you only need, only, only, only need one for the gun in any case. The ammunition, on the other hand, is a little bit different. I've got examples of all the different types here. Let's drop off the sulfur and the gunpowder. So. The hunter's handgun. First, we're going to start off with what I just showed you. The empty magazine made with uh, with these materials here. Next, I'm going to talk about each individual magazine. And the magazines are created by combining one empty magazine with uh, eight. That is one, uh, one magazine, empty magazine here, and eight rounds of the other type of bullets. Okay, sorry about that. Here we go. So. In order to make a, for example, this is a neutral shot. This is the first one we're going to talk about. An ordinary bolt. This is the this is the basic uh, type of, of round with the hunter's handgun. You make this by combining uh, four gold nuggets, some stone, some iron, and two gunpowder in order to make four. In order to make a magazine, you're going to need eight. So you have to make two recipes of this per magazine. And a magazine has eight rounds. So eight rounds per magazine, that's constant. Not for the hunter's handgun. Um, and once you get four of those, 
you would need to make, here we go. So eight here, one empty here to make one magazine of neutral shot. So this represents four gunpowder for, for eight rounds. It's a little expensive, but I think it's worth it. So we're going to start with the neutral and see where it goes from here. So here's a, here's a very important trick on loading the hunter's handgun. In order to load it, you essentially just need, need to right click. However, what if you're carrying more than one magazine on you, it will have it will prioritize one of several things. If you happen to have um, a magazine in your inventory, it will always prioritize that one. If you have multiple, sorry, if you have multiple, if you have a magazine in your hot bar, it will always prioritize that one. If you have more than one in your hot bar, I think it will prioritize the one to the left uh, of us. That is the, the upper left, in, in essence. Uh, if you do not have one in, in, in your in your hot bar, it will prioritize the one that is closest to the first slot here. So I think it goes like this, then here. So for example, if I did not have one in my inventory, it will prioritize this this uh, stack here of magazines. But in here, I'm just going to show you from your hot bar. Right click, hold, and it's loaded. You now have eight rounds to play with. Not bad, not bad. And you can see on my hotbar now, I now have eight empty casings, and empty casings can actually be put back into a crafting area to make back gold nuggets. So essentially, if you, if you, if you police your casings, as they say, you can, you can keep all your gold, but the gunpowder is you know, still very expensive. So that was in the neutral shot, and I believe that does about 8.8 .8 rounds of damage. So it's it's roughly the same amount of damage as a normal bow. And you know how we feel about normal bows and hex that they're not really that good. So neutral shot is not bad. If you want to get used to how how a I mean, hunter's handgun works, perfectly fine to use neutral use neutral shot as a beginner. Sorry about that. I had a little bit of, little bit of lag. Uh, next, we're going to get on to storm shot. And just, just just to illustrate my point, I'm going to put this over here. So it will take that when I reload from it. One other important note. When I fired the first round, you'll notice that it ejected an... Oh, sorry. When I fired the last round, it ejected an empty magazine. So let's say, for example, you had uh, neutral shot, storm shot, and sand shot. You had three stacks uh, or however many magazines with you. If you... You will also gain stacks of casing and stacks of magazine. So, and actually, actually, you're going to need five uh, slots for this and uh, for, for for using a hunter's handgun. And this can add up when you're in hexit because you gain a lot of, a lot of um, material with you. What I find the most useful is carry one stack in your inventory and put the rest in, in, in one of your backpacks. So uh, that's just my recommendation. You can also carry in here, and we're going to do that for now. So. I'm going to reload from here. Just load it. You can tell it took one from the stack of Storm magazine. So I have Storm shot. Now I'm going to go in here. Grab this. And we are in survival mode. I'm going to go away for a little minute because I just grabbed some, some creeper spawners. And... Okay, so first and foremost, Storm shot is very unusual. And unfortunately, as far as I can tell, it only has two real effects. Oh, three, sort of. Do you know it's a nice day today? So I'm a, I'm a little bit confused as to exactly how long it takes. But my understanding is that when you when you fire it off during a clear day, and I think it's only during the day, it might be night also, but you have a chance to make it rain just based on firing off the, the storm shot. And it might take a few, might take a few seconds. It might not even happen in every round. There we go. So now I'm not sure how many shots that took. I'm not sure if it was a chance or it just means you have to expand a whole whole round of it. Not certain, but you have a way of making it rain in the game. Now, here's the important thing. This is not the, the end all of this weapon. That's the beginning of it. And you see in it, it says, for great justice, no, sorry, this says, causes atmospheric weirdness. That's very true. Because I'm gonna reload with a storm shot. Watch, watch what happens now. Do you ever hear that, that, that urban legend about what happens if you happen to see a pig get struck by lightning? It turns into a zombie pigman, doesn't it? That's right. When it's raining, the storm shot will cause lightning. 
which is almost always a one-shot kill. Otherwise, it deals something like 40 damage. So, let's try. One-shot kill. Okay, another thing it does, remember what happened? You ever heard what happens when you get find a creeper that's struck by lightning? Call it an energized creeper. Now as far as I can tell the loot table is not is not is not as good as it should be. But it does in fact create energized creepers. In this case, it, 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 they have the normal hexit stuff, so they drop emerald shards. Okay, so uh, I think I have a couple more rounds in here. Oh, this one. There we go. Eight times three is twenty-four. I just used three rounds. So. I'm going to turn off the rain. Now, unfortunately, you, you can't stop the rain with the storm shot. You can just turn on. You just wait for it to normally stop. And I'm going to switch it back to daytime. So that's the storm shot. Okay, next up, we have the sand shot. And let me just drop off these so I don't get confused. Ah, here we go. So, sand magazine. And what, what this does is it's one of the least useful of all of, of all items uh, in the hunter's handgun um, arm, armory. So let me just try. Let's, let's try let's try a demonstration here to show you how this might work. And I do have to switch it back to midnight for this, unfortunately, because I want the zombie to instantly get killed just after a minute. So I believe. I happen to spawn an, an infernal one. Okay, this one has cloaking. Okay, so you notice it is doing a little bit of damage, but you notice he isn't moving that far. As, and he, yeah, I think he does have quicksand, but basically what's happening is you can see the debuff coming up. Five, four, three, two, one. Essentially, this guy has blindness, meaning he can temporarily not see me. So, but I can still see him. Okay. Yep, I can still see you. Okay, I'm, I'm out of rounds. As you can see, I do have... Well, he has exhaustion, so he's dealing with more damage than I would expect. But again, it does take quite a bit of, 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 of rounds to take down one of those big guys using blinding shot. And, and as I said, blinding is not one of the better uh, th things you can you can use with the hunter's handgun. And we're, we're, that's for that for now. It's kind of nice. Um, it, 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 it's just, and it says wreck creepers. So it does, I believe, do extra damage from creepers. Let's just take a quick look at that. Nice. Okay, so, if you want something to use to farm creepers, this one seems to be a pretty good choice. Uh, we have... So, three more. There we go, we just use, use up our, our last rounds of sand shot. Now, I, I, again, I don't recommend using, using sand shot unless you happen to have a specific purpose for it, because it's not really worth it. Let me just show you the recipe quickly. Uh... There you go. Oh. Sand shot. Basically, you take sand and neutral shots. So you need four neutral shot to make four sand shots. So you need eight in order to make eight. So, like I said, the neutral shot is sort of the, more of the base for, for other um, ammunition with the, with the hunter's handgun. So let me just. I don't really need those right now. <coughs> Okay, so next next on our list, we come to the blaze shot, and this does pretty much what you expect what you expect it would do. It deals uh, fire damage. And let's do it during the day. 
See that? Looks kind of cool. Essentially, it, it's doing it's 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 doing um, uh, sparks. So it sort of ricochets off of its surface and deals extra extra damage. Now, just like any other uh, fire damage, it doesn't deal damage to things that are naturally fire resistant, uh, such such as um, uh, the zombie pigmen and uh, magma magma creams, that kind of thing. But things like pigs, and I believe cook pork chop, just like if I use the fire aspect sword. Okay, so I got a couple more rounds of this. And I'm up, I'm up to 48. Okay, so ne next turn, and again, that's the blaze shot. And I believe that's made with blaze powder. Here we go, blaze shot, yes. Blaze pot requires three blaze powder and a blaze rod to make four. So unless you happen to have a um, a, a, a fully functioning um, blaze spawner gr blaze spawner uh, grinder, I would not recommend using blaze shot. Um, it's just too expensive. I mean, I'm saying it's even though how much gunpowder it costs for all this stuff. Okay, so next next on our list, we come to the concussive shot, and this is sort of my standard shot. And it's made using, yeah, four gunpowder and a slime ball for four. So you need a heavy supply of slime in order to make these, but I find it's definitely worth it. I'm just going to load it up and watch this. So what I have here is a target made out of um, marble uh, and red, red cobblestone. In the middle I have maize stone, which is from Twilight Forest. So let's take a look and see what happens. See that? Let's try it on the grass over here. You can see a little better. Yep. So basically what we what we have is a small explosive. It will deal damage in a small radius to all enemies in a certain area. It's a fairly small area, but as you see, it does not deal damage to the area to the um the, the blocks around it. And I think that's all rounds I have. Okay, 56, that would have been it. So I love concussive shot. It's just a great uh, gen general um, weapon. Does, uh, does deals a lot of damage and it has extra concussive shot. So if you have a number of mobs in a confined area, it can it can um, take them down relatively quickly. There is, however, the in the, the uh, sort of upgraded concussive shot, which is the Buster shot, and this is made with. Yeah, basically you take concussive shot, add more gunpowder, and more, in t more TNT. So you're going to need basically to, to raid a, a couple of galleons in order to make this stuff. But in certain situations, this is incredibly valuable. Uh, I remember the first time I used Buster Shot, and I, fr I thought it was a glitch. I thought there was must have been a creeper around me that I didn't notice. But no, Buster Shot is a griefing round. Essentially, it, de it will destroy most things around it. So, let me aim for the corner to start with. Whoa! <laughs> Check that out. And let me just finish this up. That is a huge radius. That's roughly equivalent to a little bit bigger than actual dynamite. And you can, see, you can tell it does a lot of damage. However, I find that in the confined areas like most dungeons, it's usually not a good idea to use Buster Shot. Uh, the, the reason being, you're more likely to, you know, put a hole in a, in a wall than you are to defeat all the enemies around you because it still does the same amount of damage. It just, it just does also does a, a lot of uh, block damage as well. Now, the reason the reason I, I I put maystone in the middle there is to show you this. Now, watch what happens when I take TNT and put it here. Okay, that was absolutely useless. Sorry about that. So let's try that again. What happens if I put TNT right here? Oh, I actually lied there. Okay, so what have we learned? 
maize stone, which is actually the, the material they used to use that's used to make the, the labyrinth in the in the in Twilight Forest, is susceptible to both TNT and buster shot from the, the hunter's handgun. It, however, is not normally mineable. So if you happen to be in, 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 in the Twilight Forest, you get stuck in the labyrinth and you're not sure where to go, bring, bring, break out your, your buster shot magazine and just go to town. Oops. See, this is what happens. I just accidentally loaded another round. So, oh, found a diamond. Cool. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to make this beach a little bigger. Kind of useful for terraforming also if you, if you feel like a little more of a freeform approach. Oh, and I have a full stack of... That's a 5 plus 64 is... There we go. Okay, so I got I have, I have a little more of a beachfront property than I did before, and that is Buster Shot. So next on our list, we come to Seeker Shot. Now this seems a little more unusual. It's, it's actually fairly expensive too, which is why I don't use it that often. Here we go, Seeker Shot. And according to this, it says, seeks targets. Now, my understanding is that this attacks nearby targets even if you miss. So let's say, for the sake of argument, I put down a creeper over here. Fire off around. Actually, getting some lag now. See? Okay, see that one? I missed, but it still actually hit the guy. But this one... Okay, that one I didn't initially sort of missed it. So, essentially, a uh, seeker shot is if you have relatively bad aim, uh, it, it will it will attempt to find the target you were, you were supposedly aiming for. Yeah, one more round, so... So it, it's not the best thing in the world. Uh, I'll show you how it's made. Yeah, slime balls, lapis, string, and gunpowder. Fairly, it's not too expensive, but it's not the worst thing in the world. The, the next one, however, sort of the up the upgraded version of Seeker Shot is the Ender Shot. And I'll show you how to make this. There it is. You take a Seeker Shot, eight of them, and combine it with one Eye of Ender to make the Ender Shot. Seeks targets, passes through anything. So, okay, let's try this again. Loading up. So I believe if I do this, Yeah, not the best thing in the world. It did it did kind of uh, go through, but not really. Let me try. Let me try another. Hold on, let me go a little bit farther away if I can grab it. It's definitely getting the particles, but yeah, not the most effective weapon. I think that's yeah. I'm also I'm out of, also out of rounds. So, seeker shot not the best thing in the world. It's kind of useful for firing around corners, but usually it's better just to go for the, the higher damage with like like the, the concussive shot. Okay, now I have one more shot, uh, one more type of shot to show you. Let me just get it here. Here we go. This is the exorcism shot, and this is useful against undead. So this should be a one shot against zombies. 
Loading up. Okay, so I missed the first shot, but that was a one-shot kill against zombies. So, not bad. Not, not, not the worst thing in the world. Make a couple more. I'm gonna beat you with my gun. So, all in all, not bad. Um, yeah, I think that, that, that comes to the conclusion of our segment on the hunter's handgun. Again, I, I highly recommend that that you use the. All right, if I can find it again, the the concussive shot because it seems to have that it has the um the nor the neutral shot damage, which is normal for it versus the bow, and also has the slight um a large rate, um, impact radius, so it deals damage to nearby enemies at the same time. However, it does not cause griefing. On the other hand, I do recommend you trying and carry uh, at least one one magazine of the of the buster shot. Because you never know when you have to blow a hole through a wall. And I got ahead from my trouble, too. Nice. I know I'm gonna put it up there. Okay, so um, that's the hunter's handgun. It, it's definitely not an early game weapon, but I highly recommend you, you go for it. I have a lot of fun with it, and once you get a, a steady supply of um, of gunpowder from from various sources, I think you will have a lot of a lot of fun with it too. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about uh, relatively briefly is the revolver. Now the revolver you cannot craft. Uh, it only drops, but it drops off of pirates. Those will be the ones from galleons. The reason I mention it here is because it is a very good poor man's hunter handgun if you, it, once you get it. So basically, um, you make sure you have plenty of bullets, and these bullets are dirt cheap. Let me show you how to make it. Yeah, iron, cobblestone to make nine. That is incredibly cheap for ammunition. They are approximately the same damage as a bow, so they're a little, a little bit um, more cost-effective than arrows, depending on uh, what your source is. But let me show you. And it's holding down. So the total damage is not as good as an enchanted bow. On the other hand, given how in, how cheap the ammunition is and how fast the, the refresh rate is, in fact, you can just strafe like this. Totally worth it. So again, it, it's, it's basically it's, you have the hunter's handgun, which is the weapon of of choice for all the discerning, you know, uh, monster slayers. You have the revolver, which is pretty good in a pinch. Yeah, coming at you. Yeah! You can just keep firing this as long as you have the bullets. And I recommend carrying about two stacks. That's that's an average for most encounters. Okay, so I think we've come to the, the end of our, of our lesson on the Hunter's Handgun. Uh, this is my favorite weapon in Hexit. I hope it becomes your favorite also. So, so, so go out there, get yourself some gunpowder, and uh, hap uh, ha happy hunting. Oh, and uh, class dismissed.